Kay, could you just tell us about uh, when you first started working in the cotton mill, give me the date and uh, how much you made and all of that, how old you were? You know. I was 11 years old. Okay, just start saying, I was 11 years old when I first started working in the cotton mill and I'm how old you are now. Yeah. Well, I was about 11 years old when I started working in the cotton mill and I'm 75 years old now. Tell me what it was like. Well, when I first went in, I got scared about near to death because I went out to the house. My head kept itching, as I was. So I got me a big piece of cloth and I spread it down and I started. Okay, what did I find? I was mad. I was hurt, and the girl came in that had been going to work with of a morning. She said, don't get mad at us that it's all over the roping and all over everything. Hermitage Mill in Camden. That was it. Then we went from there to uh, Lancaster, and I worked there a little while. And you'd have to put a, a roping uh, bobbin on the uh, top where the roping shelf was to find your way if you had to go to the bathroom, you had to do, you know, you had to find your frames when you come back. So we moved then to Rock Hill here and I worked at the Arcade Mill for about five years and uh, it was pretty rough. We was working all day long then it was dark when you went in and dark when you come out, and you had about 15 minutes to eat. So all worked, and the kids tended to self and did the best they could for themselves. And uh, Dad, he worked at night, and uh, me and Mama worked in daylight. So that left nobody really up with the two smaller children. But that's the risk people had to take then because they did not make enough money to hire a sitter. So we we uh, existed. That's what we did. It was hard. There was no nothing like bathrooms or anything like that. No convenience of any sort. Of course, I guess they thought they were giving us a lot. And with the outdoor facilities, but uh, it's much nicer now. So that we since we have these other things. Uh, but uh, Were you living in a mill village? George. Yes. No, that, yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, I have no. That's a real demerit for you. Well, at least I told you. I could have <laughs> left it. And people would have said, we got to rag thing. him for th the next three days about that. Only last thing. Okay. There we okay. go. It's well, all right. would have said. Okay. That's probably our worst. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, tell us, did you live in a mill village and what it was like? Yes, we lived in the mill village, and uh, you had to be awful careful. One place we lived was uh, the super. He would watch the girls when they went to town, I guess to see what they got into or something, and if your neighbor played music very loud while it was turned into the mill and all, all that stuff, you know, you pretty well guarded what you could do and what you couldn't do. And, uh, Why did they do that? I don't know, but if one did something that wasn't uh, thought right, I guess, they, they would fire one and the whole family had to leave. So that made it kind of hard on people. And, uh, that's what happened with us at the arcade mill. Daddy got into it with uh, one of the boss men and we all had to leave. Well, the rest of the bosses, my mother's and my mine, came and said they never had better help in their life and they hated it so bad, but uh, just one of those things, it was a rule that they had. And, uh, kids getting fights and things at the school, at uh, the village and all that way. A lot of times they'd take it to the mill and cause big stinks, <laughs> but uh, it was rough. Now, when did the union start coming in? That started coming in. Just started. The union started coming in, let me see, I believe, what, in 40, about 
30, in the, it was in the late 30s, but I never made enough to, uh, for them to take out nothing on me or nothing, you know, in the meal like. Uh, well, now, do you remember back in uh, 34, there was a great big strike that closed down all the mills. That's you, right. Could you tell about that? Not very much because <coughs> really I didn't pay it that much attention. <coughs> I was glad not to be in the mill at work. <laughs> But we got along very well. But uh, there was a lot of people suffered from it. Yeah. We were talking about sharing a while ago. Nobody had nothing to share with uh, people, you know. So. Well, talk about your canning. What do you do with your canning now? I noticed you got all kinds of stuff. Well, as I told you a while ago, I uh, we don't use all of it ourselves. Let's start with your garden and then say that. Yeah. We had a we have a garden and usually we have three. Back when my husband was living, we had three gardens. Well, we would raise uh, say like every space we could find for, for collars late in the fall. But uh, we had uh, we can and we'd give away. Maybe we'd find somebody sick and in need or something while we helped uh, out all we could with that and. Uh, that made me feel good, and I know it did them, so, yeah. What about now? Well, well, I do the same thing now. Yeah, one of my neighbors called me. It's been a good while back and asked me, said, Miss Sturgeon says, you got any, you got anything to eat? I said, plenty of it. Come on up. And uh, he said, well, you have some sacks ready. I'm going to help the other feller. And I said, well, that's fine. So he come and took it up. As I said, we have to watch because there's a lot of people who will not work. They're lazy, and I think it's a torture to put your body through this thing and then give it to somebody that could do their self, feel more like it, you know, than uh, than I do to can it and all. But, uh, now, you, back then you told me that you, you couldn't afford to have a babysitter. But no. The last 20 years you've been doing something else. Tell about that. Yes, uh, well, I've been retired from that now, what, about five, six years, something like that. And, uh, well, I went in it in 61. Tell us about <coughs> you, you went into babysitting and uh, keeping children and foster children. Yeah, I kept foster children for 20 years. And uh, the little ones was my thing. I loved the little ones right out of the hospital, you know. We, we met some... Uh, some pretty hurtful looking things where people walk off and leave their children and they would be undernourished and uh, some of them had the rickets and we'd have to build them up, you know. It was, it was sad, but uh, thank the Lord. He would uh, bring them out and give me strength to help them and it done me good. I got a great reward for it. Now, back in the 30s, did you see anything like rickets? Yes, I saw that. I started Back in the 30s, I saw rickets and stuff. Right. And you saw flogery. No, no, sorry. Just started saying, well, back in the 30s, you saw. Yeah, back in the 30s, uh, and even before that, in the late 20s, uh, people couldn't get nourishing food. Even my mother had uh, flogery. And uh, we find out that it's because you don't have the nourishing things that you should have. And so I guess that goes right on in to to babies and things where they don't get the right things. And so it leads to trouble. And uh, I've seen some pitiful, pitiful things like that. How did you get rid of the, of the pellagra and rickets back then? The only, the only thing is to try to build up with uh, medicine, of course, from doctors, which you can get to one, and uh, start eating properly, the right diet. It brings them out, but it hurts you anyway. It settled somewhere in your body, somewhere. Now, did you, uh, what was your family's background? My family's background was, uh, you mean like in labor? Or? <coughs> I got a picture of her later. Okay, uh, you ready, Jamie? Mm, she could see the picture, but my. My, my daddy was a farmer. Right, that's My daddy was a farmer, and he was a sharecropper. 
Uh, I hate to say it, but just as we were speaking in the living room in there a while ago, he was a man that believed in a new car every year, although they were about, what, $500 at that time. He loved to Ford. So he'd get one, and uh, in the fall, I can remember, he'd give mother about $10 or something to go and and uh, get material to uh, sew with. We had no machine, no sewing machine. And she would do what you call a back stitch and, and sit down and cut it, I guess, and, and sew it on her fingers. Our, my little dress that I had to start school in, I had two. And we'd fix one and then, you know, clean up the other one so I could go to school the next day. Very little I got to go because we was like the man that, <laughs> that uh, moved his coal pile so much that, you know, he wore it out. He didn't have no coal. He thought somebody got his coal. <laughs> but I don't know. We had love. That was the main thing. We had love. Tell us about uh, your education. <clears throat> I never went through the first grade of school because people that wasn't made to put the children through school, and it's... Uh, very rare that a father or mother doesn't see the great need of an education for their children, but mine seemed to think if you learn to work, that was the main thing. So that's what I did. But now you see, today, except for my little things here in the house, and like I'm 75 years old, and I can't go out and do anything else, for lack of education. So that was wrong. After I was married, just start to say, I, learned to read after. I learned to read after I was uh, married. That was in 30, 35. A little bit. I'm not up on it real good, but I can read enough to read the newspaper and the Bible. That's enough. Okay, tell us about your family's background in the womb. Well, we didn't have one. We didn't have a what? A union. Just say we didn't have a union. We didn't have a union. And I joined when it came to uh, Rock Hill Print and Finishing Company. I joined there, but I didn't stay long enough for it to amount to anything with me, you know. But it, I could understand it. It was a good thing to have because if they come through and told you that you're going to be cut say like two cents on the side, and I was bringing home, what, what was it, about $9.20 a week. That's working, let's see, that was running nine sides, and uh, you were, as I said, all day for that until Saturday, 11.30, and that's what you made. So they had no unions there, and they've never had one at this arcade mill over here. I guess there's no mill in there now. But uh, I don't know very much about it, but I did see the where you've got help now if something happens, some runs and tells something. that There's nothing to it, but yet they'd send you out for it, you know. But they don't do that anymore. They, ha they have somebody to go to to stand by you with things like that in, with a union. So I'm real proud of it. Now, this may not have happened here at all, but we have heard... It never happened there place I worked, no. Mm -mm. Just want to make sure of that. No, sir, it did not. It's you, interesting how strict You they were. could go to one with, with some, somebody picking at you, you know, or threatening to put something on you or something, a bug or something, you know, and he'd fix that immediately. He'd go to them and talk to them. Now, they're very nice about that. No, I never had nothing insulting or anything. Now, uh, <coughs> we've heard people talk about lint. Mm -hmm. uh, could you talk about that and attitudes towards uh, people who worked in the cotton mill? Well, it was not counted very much, I could tell you. No. Uh, even after I married, my mother-in-law told me, says, don't talk about uh, uh, factory people much, see? 
I says, why not? She says, well, Mr. Sturgis, which was in his 80s, that was Granddaddy Sturgis, uh, he thinks that they're trashy, you know? I said, Miss Sturgis, you know where they get that? I said, people moving in and out. You never know who your neighbor is. You don't know where they come from. You don't know whether to associate with them or, or not. I says, and that would give him a reason there, but they are fine people on the villages. And we find that in life everywhere, I think. You know, it's mixed. How does that make you feel? Well, I, my reply to her when she said that, I says, I hope that he never mentions that to me because I do have a temper and I know how hard I had worked and I know how hard the rest of them had worked. <clears throat> and uh, I said, because you make a dollar in there, you've earned it. So I said, I don't want to hear it. <coughs> you want to say that again so that it doesn't cut off the talk? Yeah, I said, I, that I don't want to hear it because uh, you earn every dollar that you get from a meal work, from meal work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? <clears throat> no, not that I know of. Only I think the working conditions are better now. I hate it because so many people are losing their jobs and all. But uh, the working conditions are much better. Well, I know I worked, I went in <clears> the <throat> last part of 42. I went to uh, work a little while in the bleachery over here, and uh, I just tell you the truth, I wondered what they paid me for. You know, I've been used to working like a dog, we'll just put it that way, in a, in a mill, and you just stand there and pull that cotton off of them things, you feel like your fingers are gonna fall off. It hurts so bad. But, uh, They'd say, oh, I'm tired. I have worked so hard. I said, you ought to get between spinning frames a couple of days. I said, you'd know what it's all about. So things are much better, I think, everywhere now. That way. I don't believe that you're put on like you was at that time. No. Remember when people were dipping snuff or chewing tobacco? In the I used to do it myself, yeah. <clears throat> well, I think maybe it was to keep the lint down from getting choked on lint. <laughs> I really think that. <clears throat> uh, start off and just say, please. Yeah. 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 When she first went to the Well, we'll go back to spreading the white cloth. Yeah, just no, just start mm -hmm. when the first time you went in. Yeah. Place. Now, mm -hmm. when I first went in the Hermitage Mill in Camden, I went in. I'm oh, sorry. Let's start again and tell me how old you were when you did that. I don't know. I must. I wasn't quite eleven years old. Okay. One more time. Say it again. I was not quite eleven years old when I went into Hermitage Mill in Camden. I went with my aunt in there, and so that lived in Camden at that time, and I uh, put up the inn, you know, and it was very easy to me. So they put me on a side that afternoon. Well, a day or two after that, I walked to work with these girls. And I come home, when I come home, my head itched me so bad till, oh, you, it was terrible. So I got a piece of white cloth and I laid it down and come it's combing with a fine tooth comb. And it was lice, what they call head lice. I said, oh, my Lord, and I was going on when the girls come in and said, honey, don't get mad at us. Says everybody in there has got them. Says they even on the roping. So I said, Daddy, we got to move. I made 75 cents for running that side a couple of days. I said, we got to move. We can't stay here. I don't want them things. Mm. So he was ready to go, too. <laughs> now, why did you move so often? Well, it was just that he wasn't satisfied with the job that he was on. And uh, just, we didn't like it. What did your father do in the mill? He ran cards. Okay. Just mm -hmm. say my father ran cards. My father was... ran carbs, cards in the mill. He was what called a, a card stripper. Uh -huh. He stripped cards. 
is what it was. And he had to wear a mask, and he was doing it with that cotton was going just like you were in a fog all the time. Yeah. Do you think that hurt his health? Yes. So tell about that. It, definitely I do. It was for years that he he laid his coffin and all that on uh, getting shot when he was a, uh, just a boy, he and his brother out hunting. And Daddy stood up on a stump just about the time Uncle Ashley got ready to shoot the, the rabbit and just shot the sprinkles, you know, and went and that, and that left scars on Daddy's lungs. So they tested him for TB and, and everything else, but they never did find nothing. They called it uh, emphysemia, I believe. And uh, I really don't think it was that. I, th I think it was working in all that cotton and everything that caused it. But you know, you mustn't say things like that, huh? Why not? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you something that happened one time. <clears throat> My uncle, Thomas Skipper, he's passed away now. He and a Mr. Valentine went up in North Carolina somewhere where they did have a union, was starting a union. He picked up a lot of uh, the literature. And as he was coming back through the Aragon uh, flat down there, they call it, he looked, and Mr. Valentine was letting these papers float out the window. And uh, so they fired Uncle Thomas. And the other one, I don't think he had a job. But anyway, everywhere that man would go, he was a Jack Hart loon uh, worker, you know. <coughs> but he, uh, he would go and stay about three weeks. <coughs> And they'd find it out, and they'd fire him there. He had a terrible time. They'd, they'd blackballed him everywhere he'd go. And so finally, he went over here to this little mill, at what they call Red River over here. He paid off in loonies. And he had what they called a company store. And that's where you could spend them, you know. So I've been through quite a bit of it. I didn't hear too much about unions. The people were scared to death of it, scared to even breathe it, you know. You lose your job, then what would you do? And they'd make like it wasn't that, but it was that. Mm -hmm. I feel sure. What were the loonies? That company strip? That's uh, <coughs> it was like a dime. It started uh, the loonies were. Mm -hmm. The loonies were like a dime. They looked like a silver piece of money. Now I don't know if there was any bills. I didn't see that. I wish I had kept one. But people needed them, you know, and they spent them as they got them, of course. But uh, that's what they paid off in them. So it was company money? Yes. So you couldn't use it as? Well, they would exchange it. They would exchange it, yeah. Would other merchants take it? I don't know. I don't know about that, but they would at that store. Because we've heard a few stories about other merchants that would take company money, company script, but at a 50% discount. Well, now, it could have been. I don't know. <coughs> Thomas didn't stay there very long. Excuse me. <coughs> hmm? Could you talk about the company store? Well, I never was in it in my life. Mm -hmm. But now <coughs> they've made a meal out of it. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Uh, something kind of like fire yarn over in Clover. Can't think of the name of that thing now, but, it, but it's in Red River. Do you remember ever when the National Guard was here? I heard them talking about it, but uh, not a great deal. You never saw it? No. Okay, that's mm -hmm. good. No, I never saw that. Uh, Ron? Yes? Do you have any questions? Not really. The only times is better now than they were then. I can't say they're good, but they're better than they were then. What about voting? When did you start, first start voting? I've never voted in my life. I'm sorry. Well, I just never did. I, I just don't... Uh, <laughs> Okay, there's a 
time the secret to her. I can't understand what she's. She didn't want to show it on TV. No, that that's it. I didn't. Yeah, that's really the truth. I didn't want to go out there. <laughs> I see. Okay. No. <coughs> I'm, I'm the voter. Okay. Was it because you didn't want to have to maybe judge somebody you knew? Well, <coughs> I don't want to judge nobody because if you're not there and you don't see it, mm -hmm. a lot of times you get mixed up. Hey, these mistrials and all that stuff, you know. And whenever I did go with my husband, he served on juries lots of times. And I was so tickled because the boy come out of it, I didn't know what I was doing, I got called down, like, like it scared me to death. <laughs> but I guess I could go if uh, I had to, but now I don't have to, so I don't have to worry about it. Now, <coughs> Not that I know of, ever heard of. Mm -mm. Okay. No, it tries to stay, the one I go to tries to stay on the Lord's side, and that's it. <coughs> it don't mean, you know, straddle the fence, so to speak. Mm -mm. Okay, I think we got it. Okay, we can't figure out. Tell people who is this, who is this, who is this, who is this. Okay, and if you're changing our camera, I'd like to get a couple of shots. No. Uh, action. Let's see what's going to happen. Aunt Maybelle, we better get started uh, for that family that needs some food packing it. Well, what would you suggest that I put in there? What do they? You, you think they could use most? Well, I'd give them a jar of that soup and a jar of tomatoes. And just a routine. Right. Just. Uh, just a little of all right this is delicious it's a vegetable soup that'll go good well that's good pickles to go with it here give them some of this cabbage pickle you yeah. just made yeah that's nice kids can enjoy that it's not hot here's some pear honey that you made the other day oh yeah that should go good You got some hot peppers over there? Yes. And this is just a plain tomato. That's good fix most anyway. When you get through there, we might put uh, and This is the peaches. peaches. Oh, you got peaches I got there. some canned, canned peaches, but we also have some fresh peaches and apples. Well, here's and some of their real hot peppers yeah. to put. Maybe they'll like that. Some of that jam. Uh, that's in the box there. Oh, yes. The kids can eat that. That is pear preserves. They'll love that. Is that about it? Yes, I think that's about it, unless you want to give them some of these peaches down here. Well. Kids might eat, want to eat some of those. Hey, tell us where all that stuff was grown or you found it. Springerville. This, yeah. these peaches here came from between Chesney, South Carolina, and Fingerville, South Carolina. It's the white rose peach. The pear They're, preserves uh, came from a tree. It's the old Sturgis home place. And of course the Peaches, they come from different places that I have in here. The tomatoes were grown here at uh, the Sturgis place. So, is that about it? Well, okay, I think that does it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Good. We just okay. get one little white okay. out here. Okay. We'll be all right, MOS. Yeah. Uh, we can let you do your oh, boom okay. You can just start unloading it now. Yeah, just unload it. I'm going to go to put it back in. Uh, 